Last time we began to consider some objections to Jeremy Bentham's version of utilitarianism. People raised two objections in the discussion we had. The first was the objection, the claim, that utilitarianism, by concerning itself with the greatest good for the greatest number, fails adequately to respect individual rights. And you remember we considered some examples of cost-benefit analysis. But a lot of people were unhappy with cost-benefit analysis when it came to placing a dollar value on human life. And so that led us to the second objection. It questioned whether it's possible to translate all values into a single uniform measure of value. It asks, in other words, whether all values are commensurable. The next day, the national headline in the national newspaper read, St. Anne's Girls, 50 pence a night. <laughs> Another illustration of the difficulty of translating all values, in this case a certain idea of virtue, into utilitarian terms. So that's all to illustrate the second objection to utilitarianism, at least the part of that objection that questions whether utilitarianism is right to assume that we can assume the uniformity of value, the commensurability of all values, and translate all moral considerations into dollars or money. But there is a second aspect to this worry about aggregating values and preferences. Why should we weigh all preferences that people have without assessing whether they're good preferences or bad preferences. Shouldn't we distinguish between higher pleasures and lower pleasures? Now, part of the appeal of not making any qualitative distinctions about the worth of people's preferences, part of the appeal is that it is non-judgmental and egalitarian. The Benthamite utilitarian says, everybody's preferences count, and they count regardless of what people want, regardless of what makes different people happy. For Bentham, all that matters, you'll remember, are the intensity and the duration of a pleasure or pain. The so-called higher pleasures or nobler virtues are simply those, according to Bentham, that produce stronger, longer, pleasure. He had a famous phrase to express this idea, the quantity of pleasure being equal, pushpin is as good as poetry. What was pushpin? It was some kind of a child's game, like tiddlywinks. Pushpin is as good as poetry, Bentham says. And lying behind this idea, I think, is the claim, the intuition, that it's a presumption to judge whose pleasures are intrinsically higher or worthier or better. And there is something attractive in this refusal to judge. After all, some people like Mozart, others Madonna. Some people like ballet, others bowling. Who's to say, a Benthamite might argue, who's to say which of these pleasures, whose pleasures are higher, worthier, nobler, than others. But is that right? This refusal to make qualitative distinctions. Can we altogether dispense with the idea that certain things we take pleasure in are better or worthier than others? Think back to the case of the Romans in the Colosseum. One thing that troubled people about that practice is that it seemed to violate the rights of the Christian. 
Another way of objecting to what's going on there is that the pleasure that the Romans take in this bloody spectacle, should that pleasure, which is a base kind of corrupt, degrading pleasure, should that even be valorized or weighed in deciding what the, what the general welfare is?